so many good smiles for your mama. Yeah! Look how beautiful you look today, huh? Five-year-old Emma Broadbent has an incredibly rare genetic disorder. It's so rare that she is the first person in the world to be diagnosed with it. Emma is almost six. She functions much like a three or three to five month old. She's still like a baby and that's kind of how we have to treat her and that's what she likes. She has severe physical and mental impairments. She doesn't really understand her physical limitations. All she really understands is the love that other people give her. Emma's medical challenges began early on. She had problems from birth, but at about five months, we knew something was seriously wrong with the myelin in her brain. And so that kind of led us upon the diagnostic journey. And we kind of were the family like, hey, we've got to figure out what's wrong. Emma's family agreed to have her DNA sequenced to look for changes in the protein coding parts of her genome that might explain her disorder. That search did not produce any insights. Hoping for a deeper look at her genome, they applied to the Undiagnosed Diseases Network at the National Institutes of Health and to the Rare Genomes Project at the Broad Institute. The two teams of scientists worked together, along with colleagues in Israel and Chicago, and gave the family some long-awaited answers. They found that Emma has a change in a gene called CHASER. They think this causes Emma to make too much of a protein called CHD2. But because it's so rare, we need to do more to prove that this is the diagnosis. Emma's family and her medical team knew that finding more patients like her would increase their confidence in her diagnosis and potentially kickstart the search for a treatment. Without a second case, there's just only so much you can do to advocate for your child. To try to find other patients with the same disorder as Emma's, the researchers added details about Emma's case to an online network called Matchmaker Exchange. This network connects researchers and doctors who are trying to diagnose and study ultra-rare genetic disorders. A year later, Emma got her first and only match, a patient in France with similar symptoms and the same genetic variant. It was just like a burden was like lifted off our shoulders because finally like we had what we had been trying for the past 18 months to find, which was a match. Brian and his wife, Julia, advocate for research into the gene underlying Emma's condition. They also help other families who have received a diagnosis and also want to push for new research and treatments. You've got to keep pushing, but you need to be patient. It's, it's a process and it's going to take time. Give me a big smile. Yeah, that a girl. Such a good girl. You know, my goal at the end of the day is to try to find a treatment for my daughter. And I know that that chance is, is slim. But if I don't have a diagnosis, the chance is zero. And some chance is infinitely better than no chance. To me, winning would be to give her some type of treatment that gives her enough mental and physical abilities to just say to us, I love you. That's really our goal at the end of this day is just for her to say she sees the love from us and to be able to say it back. <laughs>